In this video, I want to show you the one move that undersized softball players must learn how to do with their swing if they want to ever have a chance of hitting for power. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through my favorite drill that starts to help you teach this move to your daughter. I'm talking about learning how to fire her hips first, like Freddie Freeman is doing here, where his hands are still going up and back while his hips are firing open, where if there was a rubber band attached from his front hip to his rib cage, he would be stretching that rubber band right before he fires his swing. And the reason this move works so well is actually because the body has something that acts like a rubber band that runs across the middle of the torso. It's called fascia. And fascia is a tissue that when quickly stretched and then contracted gives muscles extra explosiveness. So if we want undersized softball players to hit for power, they have to master this move across their torso. There's just one problem. Trying to tell a kid how to fire their hips is like trying to explain to someone what chocolate ice cream tastes like who's never had chocolate ice cream. It'd be pretty hard to do, right? Because the only way to really know what chocolate ice cream tastes like would be to have actually experienced chocolate ice cream. So to help give your daughter the experience of what it's supposed to feel like to fire her hips first, what we do is we like to start by taking a bat sensor and measuring how many G-forces a girl can create from their normal swing. And after testing thousands of girls that have come through our facility, what we now know is that if a girl fires her hips first, she will be able to create over eight G-forces using a bat sensor to measure it. But because most girls don't do this move well, they're usually only able to create two or three G-forces in their swing. So we do that first to take a baseline measurement of where your daughter is at. Then if she's generating less than eight G-forces, which by the way, like there's a 98% chance your daughter can't generate eight because only one or two out of a hundred girls that, that take this test can pass this test and gen generate over eight. What we then do is a quick demonstration to help put their body in the position so they get to feel what it's supposed to like to stretch their fascia around the torso. Here's an example of how we do that. So here's the first thing that I'd recommend that you do if they're not getting above eight. We, we hand the kid the bat and we're going to ask them to stride out and stop before they start to move their hands. So go ahead, stride and stop. Okay. Then what I like to do is I like to say, I'm going to hold your hands, try to swing the bat and pull it out of my hands. Go. So stop. Look at the direction of her belly button is pointed right at the camera. Okay. Then what I will do is I will say, okay, give me the bat. And I'm gonna stride and stop. Hold my hands. Don't let me swing the bat. <laughs> and I point my belly button at the pitcher, okay? So I'm getting it pointed, maybe not quite to the pitcher, but to second baseman. So I'm like, see how I twisted? And then I'll hand the bat back to her. I'll hold her hands. She'll go again. And she feels that twist and I say, do you feel the twist in the stomach right here? You feel it? Yeah. Yeah, she does. Also, some kids, when they do this, they'll pull up. Make sure that you ask them to keep their nose above the white line in front of their toes. So that stretch, here's what's important about that stretch. We're supposed to feel that stretch right at the top where our hands are coming up and our hands are supposed to be coming up as our hip, our belt is opening while the hands are coming up and that creates that stretch. So after we've shown girls what stretching their torso in the swing is supposed to feel like, we like to put them in a drill called Big Poppy, where we'll actually be measuring how fast they fire their hips with a bat sensor. The faster they fire their hips, the more G-forces they'll create. And we do this a little bit differently than most people. What we like to do is put the athlete in the completely opposite position that we eventually want them to be in, where their chest is pointing towards the pitcher and their belt buckle is pointing towards the catcher. And we do this because from this position, the athlete knows without a shadow of a doubt, no matter how good or bad of a coach you are, without having to tell them anything, that if they want to hit the ball, they will need to pull their hands backwards while their hips are going forwards. And when we force the athlete's upper body to have to go backwards and their lower body to have to go forwards, we force the athlete to get into that position where their torso is stretched. And full speed, this drill looks like this. Now we're using a bat sensor, and if the athlete is using the bat sensor and doing the drill right, they should be able to generate at least eight G-forces in this drill. But if when you do this with your daughter, you see that she can't create eight G-forces, don't worry. Training a kid to rotate faster is a lot like training a kid to jump higher. They'll get more explosive, 
the more they train. So what we recommend is that you get a journal to keep track of her fastest scores in a notebook with this drill. And then every day that she trains, she comes in and tries to beat those scores. The more she trains her fascia to stretch and fire, the faster she'll become. And the best part, guys, is you literally don't even have to be there to help her if you don't want to. The sensor provides the coaching for you. If she does a bad rep, the sensor lets her know. If she does a good rep that's better than all the rest, the sensor lets her know. And when we put kids on this drill and let them use the sensor to train their hips to fire faster in this way, we see kids like my daughter here developing incredible hip speeds. Like where she's generating 13 G-forces from her swing as a 12U player, even though she's only five foot one at the time. And that's one of the big reasons she started to hit home runs at the age of 12 out to the opposite field because we trained her how to increase her hip speeds. Now, obviously, this isn't the only part of the swing a kid needs to get good at. There are lots of other what we call power leaks that undersized girls have in their swing that can be fixed by knowing how to correctly coach them with a bat sensor. And if you found this video helpful on how to use a bat sensor to coach your daughter to fire her hips better and would like all of our other trainings on how to use a sensor to fix the other power leaks that undersized girls have in their swings, we've actually put together a masterclass on how to train for power with a bat sensor that we would like to send you for free if you click the link below and simply buy a bat sensor from us now you could go buy this bat sensor from amazon or anywhere else they all charge 150 dollars but when you get it from us you get a step-by-step -step eight-week program that your daughter can follow that shows them how to properly be coached while using a bat sensor to specifically target power links in undersized girls swings that when girls go on this program takes them from a girl like mine who could only swing the bat 53 miles an hour to a girl who eight weeks later started swinging the bat over 60 mile an hour as a 12 year old which allowed her to start hitting home runs even though she was the second smallest girl on the team. So if you're serious about training your undersized softball player how to start hitting for power, then click the link below to order your bat sensor today and get instant access to our trainings that walk you through the best methods that we've found for using bat sensors to help fix the power leaks in your daughter's swing and train them to hit for power. The only problem is that most people don't know how to correctly identify what all of these leaks and inefficiencies are in kids' swings. And so that's why we have created a power leaks swing assessment where we have advanced software that allows you to send in video footage of your daughter's swing. And we use our software, it's powered by AI, to run that swing through a 27 point checklist that shows you exactly where she's leaking out power in her swing and then come up with with recommended training programs that show you how to fix it with the specific drills that will help your daughter and that will be different from every other person whose swing is ran through the program and are customized to her. So if you would be interested in having us analyze your daughter's swing and create a recommended training program for her with more drills that target the rest of the inefficiencies in her swing, click the link below and check out our swing assessment program where you can get that done today.